how do we begin this process of of building inclusive products? I was wondering if you could tap us into like some of those early conversations. Like, what were some of those early conversations like with the team? Yeah, uh, great question. So the, the the first thing was is we were really listening to the community, right? And so you get this feedback coming back from um, from the um, from your user base, and and again it might be a relatively quiet set of the user base because if you're thinking about, you know, a, a, a new diverse set of people that are starting to use your product, you may have to be listening very carefully for that. So number one was just looking at the diverse uh, feedback from our, from our um, pinners. Um, so the second thing was really figuring out how, what we can do about it. Right. And, and I, I you know, I, I got a, a download from uh, Nadia and Candice um, when I first joined about how to, how to decide it. And you can imagine the challenges, these are problems that it's not something that an engineer can fix in a week. This is a really hard problem to work on. And, and most, um, most companies have tried it as you've seen, you know, have failed uh, computer vision, um, you know, face detection and all kinds of uh, issues with um, especially darker skin tones initially, like in lighting conditions. And these are like, these are advanced, you know, PhD level um, problems to solve. And so, we hired uh, Nadia and Annie uh, to focus on this, picked a few uh, projects, and then, you know, frankly, we let them experiment. The good news is Pinterest is built on a, on a great experimentation dashboard and uh, a platform. And so we were able to let them run with it for a while um, and just, you know, frankly, see how it was working. Um, and as you can imagine, our early attempts were pretty bad. Um, Nadia does a wonderful talk about you know, initially we went after face detection and, and there's all that's rife with issues um, of just turning, you know, even, you know, how do you detect that a face is even there? And especially when the pandemic hit, you know, you had everybody wearing masks and, you know, all kinds of different color masks and things like that. And so it was a, a really hard problem. So we abandoned that completely and started down a new approach just to detect skin. Like, you know, can I can I identify that there's actually skin in this um, in this uh, image? And it's it's a fascinating uh, computer science problem, but it's really giving them the permission to to go work at it, right? And dedicating some resources and letting them rock and roll. So it it's a it's a really great story. It's about a she she does a, about a two hour talk about how we went through the technology uh, challenges, which is great. Oh, that's great. We'll definitely uh, track that one down and and put that in our in our show notes. Jerry, I've been asking a lot of questions. I want to open it up to you. Yeah, I think this is a very good opening story to give people a really concrete example of how building inclusive product means uh, on with examples. Um, so that, that give us the context to start uh, a deeper conversation around. I was wondering, uh, Jeremy, if you can help us to uh, sort of going down that way and to uh, deconstruct the process a little bit more so that, um, for example, just to um, or simplify the process, I can think of, well, to build inclusive uh, product, you first need to have inclusive ideas coming from the employees or the team, coming from the, the customer. And then there's a uh, make sure those you know voices are heard and amplified and included in the product you know, building, design building process. I was wondering whether you have any uh, thoughts um, in, terms of the, in terms of the framework and processes people can follow. Yeah, I'll I'll try. I, I I get get what you're saying. I think first things first. I mean, Pinterest. I think as a company, you know, this is sort of part of our mission to bring everyone the experience to you know build a life that they love. So when you think about everyone, we think about that. So it's part of our mission anyway. But but to be fair, you know, we really heard this from our user base, and so and I, I think you know this was many years ago uh, that we started this effort. Um, but I think many companies are going around, uh, you know, around the globe have now heard this from their consumer base that, hey, we've got to build a, a much better uh, product um, for our diverse uh, user base. So listening, listening is number two. And then number three, um, I mentioned, which is really the key, is making sure that you get some experts in there to understand if your data set is already biased, right? And if it is already biased, which it probably is, um, then to go address that by either um, filtering out the bias by leveling the playing field or to go buy or, you know, acquire some data that is more diverse. You know, that's really the key. Once you have a diverse set of data, then you can have your machine learning uh, teams uh, build on that, that data set to, to start. Uh, and then, and then, frankly, then the last part is test, you know, get feedback, right? And I think that's a, a fairly well-known uh, practice, but 
you know, make sure you're, you're, you've got a very diverse set of people who are vocal about uh, whether the results are working. And uh, that's really the, the, the work we've done. And, and like I've said, we've done it over oh, years of iterations at this point. So um, it's really something that it's hard to get right the first time.